This is the PlayStation Portal. It's a $200 handheld that can only stream games from your PlayStation 5. It can't play any games on its own, can't do anything offline. It's just a window into your PlayStation 5. It's a portal, get it? Now I was pretty skeptical when Sony announced this thing because $200 seemed kind of wild just for a streaming device. For that amount of money, you could buy a Switch Lite, you could put money towards another Switch or save up for next year's model, you're halfway towards a Steam Deck, or you could just spend $100 and get a backbone controller for your phone and do some remote play there. Any of those other options seem like a better idea than a $200 device that can only stream games. And those other systems that can also play games offline, so that's a pretty nice bonus. After testing this thing for a week, I'm even more baffled by it. It's nice when it actually works well, so I'll admit that, but there are just so many potential issues. If you have any internet connectivity issues, if you have trouble with wireless reception, if your PlayStation 5 just starts to get wonky for some reason, as mine did as I was trying to stream, you're basically left with a $200 doorstop. That seems like a huge shame. You can't use this thing on a plane since airplane Wi-Fi, even if it's fast enough, is gonna have really terrible latency. And you wouldn't want it to be your only device if you were traveling because you never know how fast your hotel's Wi-Fi is. And there may be instances where you have no internet and you wanna do some gaming. This thing's gonna be absolutely no help. So what's the point of spending $200 on a handheld system that only works when the planets are aligned correctly? But you know what to be nice? Let's start with what works about this. I do think it's a really nice looking handheld. Sony's clearly following the PlayStation 5 design here for better or worse. It's also nice to see that Sony shoved in a, an eight inch screen, which is bigger than what you get on the Switch and a lot of other handhelds. And you have the full capacity of the DualSense controller too, like all the buttons, all the, it feels like a DualSense controller in your hand, except it has a bigger screen. But if you're used to the DualSense, you're used to this. And I think that's a pretty big benefit. And yes, if everything works out, you have good internet, your router is keeping up, your wireless reception is great, then streaming does work pretty well on this. This is a screen that can reach up to 60 FPS. It's decently sharp enough for handheld play. If you're looking for an all-in-one solution just to stream from your PlayStation 5, this is probably the best one. But you know what, during my testing, there were just so many things that annoyed me about the system, especially at $200. I just can't really recommend it to anybody. Like speaking of the design, why did Sony just have the screen hang down from the bottom like this? It really does look like a tablet just shoved in the middle here. And this is so different than most other handheld systems. If you look at the Switch or the Steam Deck, the case typically covers the entire border of the screen. So if you drop those things, there's a good chance that, you know, maybe something will get damaged, but at least the screen will be okay with this system there's a very good chance if this falls on the ground that the corners of the screen could be hurt easily. Now there's a chance the controller arms could help here, but you know what, that's not enough to me. Um, I have paranoid parent brain and I'm looking at this thing and just waiting for the moment when it breaks. This design also makes it really weird to just put it in a bag because it's kind of bulky. There's no official case from Sony, so you could buy a third party case to protect it. But otherwise, you're gonna maybe put this in a bag and hope that everything works out okay when you pull it out. I think the biggest issue for me is that I just can't trust the PlayStation Portal. When I was testing it at home in some rooms, like if I was close to my router, I usually had decent reception, decent gameplay, it connected pretty quickly. But there were instances where it just lost connectivity for no reason, even if I was in the same location where it was working fine before. Generally, I can do pretty much anything I want wirelessly and I get speeds between 800 and 900 megabits easily. So it was really strange when the Portal would just lose connectivity or would just refuse to even reach the PlayStation 5 when I was in the exact spot where it worked before. If I step outside my house just to maybe enjoy some fresh air, it gets even wonkier because my router is gonna have trouble getting that wireless signal out there. So it's not something I could just lounge in the backyard easily with because I'm always worried about that disconnection error message that's gonna inevitably come. You can take this thing outside your home to play as long as you're going somewhere with good internet quality. In my testing, like it's worked fine at some public connections. I was even able to tether it over my phone. The gameplay actually looked pretty good, but I do want to point out, I was also tethering over the fastest 5G connection you can get. The download speeds were like 700 megabits from what I was testing. So that's incredibly fast and a very ideal situation. That's not gonna be the same if you're still just on 4G LTE or somewhere where this wireless reception just isn't as good. And even though I was able to tether, 
I couldn't get into a long session of God of War 2 or Spider-Man 2 because I just knew that disconnection message was gonna come at some point. I also couldn't help but think like, wow, I could just do so much more with a handheld that can actually play offline. I could play Tears of the Kingdom on a Switch Lite. I could play Baldur's Gate 3 on a Steam Deck without worrying about internet. That just seems like a huge limitation for something like the portal, certainly at $200. I guess one nice thing about it being a streaming only system is that the battery life is actually pretty good. The portal got between seven and eight hours of gameplay throughout my testing, but you know, that's just because it's just sitting here decoding video and it probably has some decent efficient onboard video decoding as well. It's not actually doing much work, so that makes sense, I guess, yeah. And also just weirdly, the PlayStation portal has no Bluetooth support. So even though you may have a pair of wireless Bluetooth headphones or AirPods or something, they won't work with this. It'll only work with the PlayStation Explore wireless earbuds. Those are the new planar magnetic ones that Sony just released. They sound okay, but the limitation, the lack of Bluetooth really feels like old classic Sony where we had to buy memory sticks instead of using SD cards like everybody else. It just feels like a limitation that Sony put in here to keep this thing cheap or relatively cheap, but ultimately hurts the user experience. At the very least though, you can plug in headphones into the three and a half millimeter jack. It's located way on the bottom of this device. So that's something, but it's another one of those annoyances that makes me feel like this device is obsolete even before it actually launches. This is a nice streaming device if you have good internet. But the other thing I wanna point out is that Sony has also been doing some pretty good work around game streaming for years. You can use the PlayStation Remote app on your phone, on your computer, and all you need to do is get a controller to work with that. You could use, I believe, the backbones on your phones or pair a PlayStation 5 controller on your computer and just get really nice gameplay. I've talked to people who were interested in the PlayStation Portal because they wanted to game on their couch or game in bed while their TV was being used. And I could totally see that viewpoint. I could see that actually being a useful thing, but this thing is also $200. And that just seems a little too much for what Sony is actually giving you here. Right now we're in an era where Nintendo has proven that handheld systems can be like your main primary console. And Valve is really out here pushing PC makers to deliver handheld gaming PCs. And amidst all of this, Sony has given us something that can only stream games from a system that already costs a lot of money. That's another thing. Do you really wanna spend $200 to play PlayStation 5 games? at a lesser quality, that also seems a little wild to me. So here's the thing, I'm not gonna tell you don't buy the PlayStation Portal, it's your money, you could do what you want, but I do think that money could be better spent in so many other ways. And at the very least, if you're really interested in this thing, I have a feeling it's gonna go cheap within the next year or so, so don't rush out to get it anytime soon. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our gaming accessory reviews, and if you dug this video, please be sure to like and subscribe.